Hi, and I am so excited to be with you today. I'm Pastor Jerry. I'm one of the staff pastors here at Discover Life Church. It's my privilege and honor to spend just a few moments with you to bring you a word within a word, a word of encouragement. Do me a favor, hit click, like, click like, and then hit share, whether it's on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, even on our app. You can like and share from all of those platforms. Send it to a friend, family member, whoever, someone who needs encouragement as well. Uh, I don't have time to read the entire account, but take this, make a note of 1 Samuel 17. It's the account of David and Goliath. And that's the title of my Devo today is Facing Your Goliath. We're all going to have them at some point in our life. Most of us know what the biblical account of David and Goliath was, but today I want to share with you a few other things such as this. The name Goliath, it means to expose, reveal, or uncover. Goliath exposed the cowardice of King Saul. King Saul was a wicked and weak king, and the fear that gripped the army of Israel at that time. And it also revealed the heart of a warrior, and that was David. The army of Israel was terrified of Goliath, not because of his stature, it's because of King Saul. He was, a weak, he was a weak leader. And if you're taking notes, write this down. Weak leaders produce weak followers. I'm gonna say that again. Weak leaders always, they will produce weak followers. Giants expose our hearts. It exposes everything within us. Then you are confronted with a choice. Do I face them and fight them or do I run? So what giants are you facing? Is it low self-esteem, fear of the unknown, fear of the known, finances? And you know what? The list can go on and on and on. And here's my takeaway, and I want to share it with you. The takeaway, I have four things that I learned from this, from this account. Fight for what's yours, and that fight has to rise up within you. So what is in you? What is in you that makes you want it? King David wanted it. You know why? Because he was told that he would get the king's daughter. He would not pay any taxes. There was a big, big sum of money, and I'm just abbreviating it. But you have when you read 1 Samuel 17, you will see why David says, you know what? I can do this. I can take him. I can, I am fit to do this, which leads me to number two. You got to be bigger than your giant. Now, David, by all accounts, was somewhere between 5'7 to 5'11. Goliath, it is widely agreed upon in, the, in theological circles that he was nine foot tall to nine foot six. Do you think some of the NBA players are big and tall? This was a humongous individual. But see, King Saul focused on all the wrong things. David focused on the reward. And how do you become bigger? How do you become bigger than your giant? Well, one, side note, spend time in the Word and keep a journal close by. Take notes because a word from God will come at, in, in an instant and be ready to jot it down. And number three, always look to the Word of God Always look in the Word of God and read it daily. And then that's where you're going to find your answer. See, David went to the brook. He picked up five smooth stones. Was David afraid of missing? No. He knew that he was capable and he knew that he was able. See, water in uh, types and shadows represents the Word. And the number five, he picked up five smooth stones. Five is God's number of grace. David was getting more than stones. He reached into the word and extracted God's grace for the task at hand. And number four, this is my last point. Ignore the ones who tell you that you can't do it. Ignore the ones that tell you it, it'll never happen. See, David's brothers told him, go home and go back to daddy, go tend your sheep. And David's going, well, what, do, what does a guy who takes out that giant, what does he get? He was told what he would get. He says, I can do it. Now here's his brothers on the forefront. They are on the forefront of the battle. Nobody's doing anything. David said, I'll do it. 
and we know all, and all of us know how it ends. He took a rock, put it in a sling, and threw it and killed a giant who was holding a sword and spear. And he killed him with a rock. Actually, he knocked him out, took the giant, took Goliath's sword, cut his head off, picked it up, walked into Saul's tent and says, here, this is how you get ahead in life. And that sparked something in the nation of Israel, the army of Israel that day, and the fight just rose up inside of them and they went and they took out the Philistines. Plus, Goliath had two brothers, which from what I've studied, were not much smaller than him, maybe a few inches to a half a foot smaller than their big brother, Goliath. And they went in and cleaned house. Something was sparked and it said to Israel, we can do this. Your act of obedience and your act of courage can spark hope, not only in yourself, your family, but people all around you. You could be that encourager that that person or the world needs. The world needs more encouragers. We need you. Go out and encourage someone today. Take out your giant and be an encourager. God bless you, and I look forward to seeing you again real soon.